Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. Wherever you are, remember, you have greatness inside of you. Welcome back to another Ad Daily News with your hockey coach, Guru Coach Frenchy. Today, episode number 197. What do you have with the minute coach today? First of all, my name, Value. Recap game, Montreal Canadian Seattle Kraken. And finally, consists my series of the NHL Draft 23. Today, I'm talking about my ranking 11 to 15. But before we leave, we want to remind you, don't forget, please, to click on the like, subscribe to our condition show. Leave me a comment about this episode. And of course, let's talking about my first subject of the day. My first subject of the day, guys, about Charmanian value. I'm not here to tell you to trade or not trade. I'm just talking about what it would be his value if they trade him at the trade deadline. It's not about the trade, but his value today from the past. That's what I just explained to you guys. Not many top six center at the trade deadline in the last five seasons. So what I did, I go backwards and looking about friend trade between 17 to 22. And I'm going to talk about friend trade what happening at the traded line and what the team got in return. And 2022, we have two trades as a top center, Andrew Cup and Claude Giroux from the Flyers. The Flyers got in return for the Panthers, Owen Tippett, another first in NHL. They got in return the first round pick 2024 and the third round pick 2023. Three assets for Claude Giroux. Winnipeg got from the New York Rangers uh, second round pick 2022 coach Chanel. They became, after the playoff with the Rangers, a first round pick. They got Morgan Barron, fifth round pick 2023 and the sixth round pick 2023. Four asset and return for Andrew Kopp. Uh, unbelievable. And 2018, Paul Stashny, at that time, 32 years old, the St. Louis Blues got for him, first round pick 2018, prospect Foley, fourth round pick 2020. Three assets. The Ottawa Senator won the trade, Derek Brazar, at the trade deadline, they got with a three-way trade. A first round pick 2018, the goaltender Gustafsson, third round pick 2019. They got three assets in return for Brassard. Montreal Canadian guys could get in return, possibly because Monian is better, in my eyes, to Paul Sashny, Derek Brassard, and Andrew Kopp. Everybody said 2023, nobody's going to trade their first round pick. I want to remind you guys, in 2015, one of the best NHL drafts since 2003, we got five different trades for their first round pick. My point is possibly some team believe they can go deep in the playoff could trade the first one pick. Team like Colorado, Minnesota Wild, the New York Islanders, Edmonton Oilers, or the Carolina Hurricane could trade the first one pick if it's necessary, possibly to trade for Sean Monahan. Then I want to talk about my verdict. What Montreal Canadian could get in return for Sean Manian? First of all, a 2023 first round pick plus a good prospect and a players they want to give away because the salary cap. Of course, Montreal Canadian can keep 50% of the salary cap of Manian. Or they could get a 2024 first round pick, a third round pick plus a good prospect plus another cap down players or at the end a former first round pick and NHL a second round pick and again they can keep the retaining salary of the money and uh, plus a, a down contract from that team they trade and that's for me this is a kind of value the Montreal Canadiens they could get and return for Sean Manen at a trade deadline I'm not here to tell you they should trade I just want to show to you what my perspective of the value of Sean Manen at the trade deadline if the Montreal are patient to keep him until at that time of the season. So this concludes, guys, my first subject of the day. But I would like to hear from you, your comments about my perspective about the value of Sean Manen. And let's move on now for my next subject. My next subject, guys, is about my NHL Draft 23 Mark 1.0. Today, I want to talk about my ranking 11 to 15. First of all, number 11, the center, Nate Danielson, that played with Brandon and the WHL, born September 27, 2004. Big 6'2", 185 pounds, shoot on the right. And 28 games so far with Brandon, 14 goals, 19 assists for 33 
point. Danielson is a well-rounded center who has been an excellent player and junior. He has the skill and the hockey sense to make a lot of play inside of the offensive zone. Also having the initial body and skating ability to make you think he will be able to make those kind of play at the higher level. Danielson can drive the play do is a brain feet and compete down the middle i would say to you he have a good hands and of course he have a great vision iq hockey sense so daniel should be a good pick in the initial draft 2023 pick number 12 guys for my selection is a defenseman the first defenseman of my mock draft cameron allen play in ohl with quant he born july 1st 2005 is a defenseman shoot on the right 511 100 pounds play 27 games so far, 4 goals, 10 assists for a total of 14 points. Cam Allen, he is my first defenseman overall on my Mach 1.0, like I mentioned. Why? Because he's a very good skater with an amazing vision. He had 13 goals last season and he, he was drafted third overall when he was age of 15 years old. He was, of course, the rookie of the year in OHL last year. His numbers are lower so far, but he is uh, focusing on the, his ability to improve his defensive zone coverage. He play more physical and he want to win more battles, a one versus one. So he really is focusing to become a better defenseman overall. He remind me right now at Charlie McEnroy. We'll see how he's going to develop in the future, but I really like the selection of Cameron Allen number 12. For my number 13, I have to go with the Charlie Strammel, the play right now for the Wisconsin Badger and NCA, born October 15, 2004. A big center, 6'3", 212 pounds, shoot on the right, and 16 game only, have three goals, three assists for a total of six points. He is a big 6'3", center who can skate well, he play at a highly physical brand of hockey. And he was very good puck skill and can make some play. Even thought his pure offensive upside and overall hockey IQ are the big area of debate on his game. He is a big fast physical center with solid offense that offer a lot of value. The key for me is going to be patient with him. He play right now at only 18 years old with other players older, 22, 23, 24, and he need to adjust his physical teams during those games in NCA. But don't worry about his number. He's going to be a good selection in the NHL Draft 23. Selection number 14, the center winger from Sweden, Otto Stenberg. Play on the G20 National. Play a couple of games on the SHL with Finland. Born May 29, 2005. 5'11", 181 pounds. Shoot on the left. 18 games so far with the G20 National. 6 goals, 8 assists for a total of 14. Stenberg has been up to the bit of the slow start in Sweden after been a top player at the Ilka Gretzky Cup. Stanberg is a well round forward, is a strong skater with good hands who can be a threat and a transition. He's not a dynamic offensive player, but he see the eyes well, great vision, can beat defender one-on-one, -on -one, and can finish from range. And I still believe he's going to be a top 15, worst case, top 20 NHL draft and 23. Finally, my last pick 15 of the day, is a left winger, Colby Barlow, play in the OHL with Owen Sound, born February 15, 2005, a big left winger at 195 pounds, 5'11", shoot on the left, and 23 game, he already scored 20 goal, guys, almost one goal per game, 15 and 35 point a really great start season for him, he's going to be an amazing great hockey player in the future, Bellow is a strong skater with he compete well. He has great. He has great offensive skill. He can shoot the puck, making him a threat on the power play. Also, a short-ended threat who can penalty well. You have an amazing, great shot. He really strength power on his wrist shot. It remind me a little bit Shane Wright shot. Again, he need to polish a little bit more his skating. But overall, Balu should be a definitely a pick below twenty in NHL Draft 2023. And this complete, guys, uh, all my selection are from 11 to 15. Please leave me a comment about those players. And let's move on for my last subject of the day. My last subject of the day is a quick recap game between the Seattle Kraken versus the Montreal Canadian. Final score, Montreal Canadian won by a score of 4-2. We have a couple of players scored the first goal in NHL. First of all, Montreal, the defenseman, Kovacevic, uh, scored his first in NHL. And then straight right, uh, we know the... The debate right and Safkowski got his first goal in NHL. Safkowski got a 
one assist during that game. But look, Montreal took advantage of the opportunities. Again, a goaltender, not great. They scored four goals and eight shots during the first two periods. Unbelievable. First of all, Cole Caulfield opened the score of the game with his 15th of the season. Josh Anderson scored his seven of the year. Back-to-back -back goal for him. And then finally, Ren Pitlick is the another score for the Montreal Canadiens. Jake Allen was set again for the Montreal Canadiens. Montreal completed their trip of four game. They got five points at the possibility, eight points. Unbelievable trip for the Montreal Canadiens because of the veteran Jake Allen. 2-1-0, stop 91, save of the 96 shot. He faced a five versus five. So great performance, and Allen is one the reason why the Montreal Canadiens got five points. Overall, great trip. Montreal is going to return to play at the Bell Center next Saturday again the Los Angeles King and Philip Dano. We're going to do, of course, the play-by-play. -play. And that's conclude, guys, all my subject I have for you for this episode. Here we go, guys. This complete my episode. Hopefully, you enjoy it. But before we leave, we want to invite you. Don't forget, please, to click on the like, subscribe to our Canadian Live Show. Leave me a comment about this episode. And I want to remind you, you have greatness inside of you. We wish you an amazing, blessing day, everybody.